Good evening and welcome to this evening's event hosted by the Georgia Institute of Technology's Strategic Energy Institute in partnership with the MIT Enterprise Forum of Atlanta and the Georgia Research Alliance. The but since most of us like just dealing with one big problem at a time, we tend to sometimes denigrate the other and say, look, I think climate change is hugely important. That terrorism stuff can probably be dealt with rather easily by the FBI and not much more. Or we say terrorism is the great threat of our time. We have to put all our effort on that and those folks who are worried about climate change and global warming are probably a bunch of tree huggers we don't need to pay much attention to. I want you to try briefly here for five minutes or so a thought experiment with me. Assume a dialogue between a tree hugger and a hawk. The tree hugger, I'm going to pick the ghost of John Muir. And the ghost of John Muir is worried only about climate change, not too interested in terrorism. And the hawk that we're asking him to meet with is the ghost of George S. Patton, who is not particularly interested in climate change and is worried a great deal about terrorism. Muir goes off and sits under one of his beloved redwood trees for a bit and comes back with a plan. Half a dozen things he wants to suggest to Patton. Patton says, well, John, I'll listen to you, but I don't think we're going to agree on anything. Uh, but go ahead, give it a try. One is I want us to move and the government to encourage us to move as quickly as possible to plug in hybrid vehicles, which means that we drive a certain amount 20, 30, 40 miles on off-peak overnight electricity, and then we don't have to plug in again. We just become a regular, the car just becomes a regular hybrid until you can plug it in again and get another, uh, another charge of electricity. But that would take a 50-mile-a-gallon Prius, let's say, up to, George, about 125 miles a gallon. Patton says, well, it's fine with me reduces our reliance on oil. You know, I don't mind oil as oil, but it comes from the Middle East. It helps finance the terrorism. Sure, let's, let's, let's do it. I didn't think we'd agree on anything, uh, John, but all right. We also make it necessary that all of these cars be flexible fuel vehicles. It only costs about $50 a, a car. It's much simpler than, than putting in seat belts. I like that, but from your point of view, George, you ought to like it because it's not oil. Patton says, yeah, you're two for two. I didn't expect this. I don't agree with why you're doing it, but it looks like we want to do the same thing. I'm with you. What's next? He said, look at um, uh, what uh, has happened in California in the last 20 years. They decided 20 years ago they were going to change the rules for the utilities and tell them they would not be able to make more money anymore by just producing electricity and marking it up. No return on sales. Return on investment. If you invest, including in energy savings investments, you get a return on that. California hasn't done everything right, to put it mildly, George, but they did this right. And over the last 20 years, their electricity use per capita has been absolutely flat. Rest of the country, it's gone up 60%. Patton says, hey, John, you're a Californian, I'm a Californian. Why can't people learn from California? I know we're a little crazy out there, but, but this is right. We're together on this one, too, right? Three for three? Patton says, absolutely. Denmark. Danes, 20 years ago, decided to maximize the use of waste, use of waste heat. In Denmark, George, if you've got a coking plant on one side of the road and produce a lot of extra heat, and I've got an aluminum plant on the other side, you string an electric wire over to me, you, you dr drive a generator, I buy your electricity very cheaply. The Danes get 50% of the electricity for their whole country out of waste heat, combined heat and power, it's called, or cogen. We do that very little here, way under 10%. Patton says, why? Muir says, well, it's, I'm, I think it's our friends in the public utility commissions again. And one other thing, you know about 70% of electricity goes to buildings? He said, we've got some new studies, Rocky Mountain Institute and others, that make it clear that if you just take the projects to improve buildings' electricity use around the world that have a 10% or better internal rate of return, that is, make money, sometimes in a year or two or three, sometimes in 10, but all of these make money, and you undertake those, it reduces 
CO2 emissions by more than half of what you need to hold CO2 emissions at 550 parts per million or less, which is about double where they were at the beginning of the industrial age and may not be enough, but it's a lot better than most other steps that people are talking about. Patton says, hey, that's fine. And he says, all of this is great because you're relying less on the grid. Muir says, all right, here's the last one I think you'll like. And that's to give a lot of incentives for distributed generation of electricity. Rooftop solar, local wind, heat pumps for shallow geothermal, a number of things, but probably solar is coming the fastest. Wind has gotten to be very good recently, but uh, solar is coming down and down and down in cost. It's already below rooftop solar, is below the cost of peak power in California. It's about double the power, cost of peak power in the rest of the country. But it will be there, I think, in a very few years that you can buy power from your roof for about the same thing as you can buy it from the grid. Patton says, again. He said, this is using your small units. He says, John, are you sure you don't have a military background? He said, the way I relieved Bastogne so fast was I could trust my captains and my platoon sergeants, and I, I knew my small units could get the job done. Anybody who's ever been in combat knows that you've got to have small units being the center of your emphasis and you know, this is great. I think you're six for six. Muir says, I'm afraid the next couple you may not like quite so much, and I'll close with those, George. He said, there are a number of things we can do to reduce carbon with big power plants. We can go to big wind farms. We can go to big central solar thermal plants. We can go to nuclear power. We can go to carbon sequestra capture and sequestration from coal-fired plants. And I like all of those. Some are more expensive than others. But what do you think? Patton says they rely more on the grid. Hey, look, I know the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line is vulnerable from, if you bypass it, it's vulnerable from the flanks, but it wasn't vulnerable from the frontal attack. He said the grid's vulnerable from all directions. I, I could go with some of these if you have to, but if the nuclear power thing, you want to watch out, John. Because if you start spreading nuclear power plants all over the world, you're going to have to completely change the international regime for arms control and nonproliferation because all these other countries, a bunch of them, are going to start doing what North Korea and Iran have done and use nuclear power as an excuse to get into the fuel cycle and produce fissionable material. Muir says, okay, I, I hear you. But, so these are further down your list. But if we have to build new central power plants, the kind I've described are okay, right? Patton said, well, grumble, grumble, and yeah, I suppose. I don't think you're going to like this. Coal to liquid. What the Germans used to do, gasify coal, put it through a filter, turn it into diesel fuel. I bet you like it, George, because coal isn't oil and it's here. Uh, and you like those two things, and I hate this because it puts a lot of extra carbon into the atmosphere. I guess we just disagree about this. Patton said, yeah, we got to disagree. And then Patton gets kind of a glint in his eye, and he says, uh, you know, he said, John, we might be able to do a deal here. And Muir says, what do you mean? Patton says, well, I've been looking for some support for something I care about a lot. He said, you know, looking at this Iraq thing and all, you know, I was an armored officer. He said, we really need at least three more armored divisions in the U.S. Army. I'd love to have you support me on, on that, John. And Muir says, well, I've never been into that much. But he said, I don't really think I want to spend the money. And I'll tell you what, George. He said, if we add a new national park for every armored division, I could go along with you. Patton says, hey, national parks. You can hunt in those, can't you? Muir says, George, you are absolutely outrageous. That's a weird... Patton says, just pulling your chain. The evening mist starts to come in, and they start to stroll off together. And being ghosts, they can change their visages a bit. And one begins to look a little bit like Humphrey Bogart, and the other a little bit like Claude Rains. And Patton, who now looks a little bit like Bogart, turns over and puts his hand on Muir's shoulder, and he says, you know, Johnny... This could be the start of a beautiful friendship. Thank you.